Al-Kaaba is something very much honored by all Muslims, and they consider it a very special place. And a Sharia have put it in a very distinguished place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this place that this is the first place ever was put on earth for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said Allah had made Mecca sacred the day he created the heavens and the earth. And it is sacred until the day of resurrection. And Islam shows so many ways of respect to this place. Number one, refer to it as a place of worship. Allah said to Ibrahim and to his son Ismail to prepare this place and purify this place to be a place of worship where people can pray, can prostrate to, to their Lord, can make tawaf to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have chosen the best of his prophets and the best of his messengers to build it and to clean it and to take care of it and to look after it. So this place was built, as we're going to know a little bit, either by Prophet Ibrahim, which is considered the father of all the prophets, or literally, figuratively speaking, he's the father of all prophets, or literally the father of all prophets, which is Adam, alayhi salam. Adam, it's been said that he's the one who built Al-Kaaba. Out of honoring, also some ulama said it may be built even by the angels, not by humans. And this is to show you that how sacred this place and how special this place. This place has two stones were sent down from heavens to earth, which is Al-Hajr al-Aswad, the black stone, and Maqam Ibrahim. Both came from Jannah to earth. Also, it is a central of the worship. It's a point of reference when it comes to the worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said whenever we pray, that we should direct our face toward Al-Kaaba, what is Al-Kaaba is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Al-Kaaba by making it in the central of the world. And I was looking into some of the research into this, and I found out that the modern scholars try to look Al-Kaaba's position comparing to any other place in the world. It's really in the heart of the world. They said if you make a line from, Al- from where Mecca is, between Australia, South America, and all the way in the north, you'll see that Mecca comes really in the center of the world. Part of honoring this place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, protected this house from the time it was built, that every time someone tried to destroy it, someone tried to harm this place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected it and never let anyone to harm it. And the example that we're very familiar with, when the army came from Yemen to destroy Al-Kaaba when the Prophet ﷺ was just born, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent from heaven, uh, from uh, the sky, a bird uh, uh, carrying stones that all the people, or that the army of Abraha who came from Abyssinia and soldiers he came with. But that protection to Al-Kaaba was only before the time of the Prophet Muhammad Not anymore Allah promised to protect Al-Kaaba. It's interesting, isn't it? Al-Kaaba was destroyed many times after the time of the Prophet and rebuilt until it will be destroyed in the end of the days. By it. And again, an army comes from Abyssinia. In Nabi Sallallahu said, he will come and he will destroy Al-Kaaba and he will knock it down one stone at a time, people watching it, and no one will move. No one will do anything. And it will never be rebuilt again. And in that moment, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will take back the stones that he sent down from heavens, take it back to the heavens. Allah will take back the black stone to the heavens because it doesn't belong to this earth anymore after it will be destroyed. Among the honoring of this uh, place, the Tinnabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that it is forbidden for anyone to cut the trees that around Al-Kaaba. 
to be utilized for building houses or anything of that nature. Also, you're not allowed to hunt around the room of al Kaaba. You're not allowed to kill the animals that in the Kaaba, the birds, the cats, whatever animals that you see there, unless it is something harmful, you're allowed to protect yourself from it. Also, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbid us to spit towards al Kaaba. If it's front of you or not in front of you. And that's a lot of people don't know this rules. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an said, since I heard this hadith, I never ever spit until I made sure where the qibla is before I spit. Also, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, when you go to urinate or to go to the bathroom, you should not, when you sit in the toilet seat or you sit to relieve yourself, you should not be facing al Kaaba, no giving al Kaaba your back. Some ulama said that this is only restricted in an open area, like in desert. But if you are in building, it's okay. But all these rules, the point was, are meant to show you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored this place. And out of honoring this place, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it Baytullah, the house of Allah. It means this is something Allah made, Allah created, Allah gifted it, it's from Him. Allah honored it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected it and made it, made it very special. al kaaba means something that stick out, something that has the shape like a round shape. And al kaaba was called al kaaba because Mecca, if you, if you can imagine how it used to be, it's flat. So this flat surface, you all see, then you see this sticking out building in it. And in the, in the past, it was completely, there is nobody lives around al Kaaba. It used to be an abandoned area. There is only this building sticking out in the middle of nowhere. And this is before Ibrahim basically moved his family there. That's why it was called al Kaaba because it's sticking out. Something very easily to be recognized and distinguished. Al Kaaba, this word, was mentioned in the Quran two times in Surah Al Ma'idah in 95 and 97. Allah has made the Kaaba, the sacred house, upright for the people. Um, also known as Al Bayt, the house. Al Baytul Haram, the sacred house. Al Baytul Atiq, something very old, something liberated because. Allah freed the Kaaba from being destroyed by dictators or pagan. Al Atiq also, like when you say Itrun Atiq, something beautiful, okay, something honorable. So that's what Al Baytul Atiq uh, uh, means. Also Al Qibla, which it means direction. Who built Al Kaaba? Uh, this is one of the things that we have no clear evidence, like very explicit evidence about who built al Kaaba. But the most famous opinions about this among the Muslim scholars and historians and theologians is three opinions. Number one, al malaika And that's mentioned by Abu Ja'far al-Baqir, rahimahullah. The second opinion, which is Adam, when he was sent down to earth, that one of the tasks that Allah gave to Adam to do was to build al Kaaba. And this is the opinion of Ata, one of the famous scholars of Mecca, among the successors, and Sa'id ibn al Musayyib. A third opinion, which is very, very famous, which is Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim. And this is the choice of Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Kathir, Ibn al Qayyim. All of them said that this place was built by. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. They said because Allah in the hadith in Bukhari, Ibrahim said, Allah ordered me to come to build house. This is the most strong opinion, the evidence that they have. But the other group who said no, it was built before Ibrahim. And we have many evidence to prove that. Among them, what Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, He said, we order Ibrahim and Ismail to clean and to purify my house. So that means the house is exist. But some said, no, it means purify it and clean it after you build it. It's not very explicit. They said, okay. They said, we have another one. Allah said, when Ibrahim and Ismail 
risen the house. So they basically, what they did, Allah ordered them to build on the foundations that was already exist. So that means this house, this al kaaba the foundation were exist. But they build on these foundations. So there is someone else build these foundations. So that means it was exist before Ibrahim did it. Also, before Ibrahim built al kaaba when he just brought his, the mother of his son, Hajar, with his son Ismail, to the place of Mecca, and he left them there. What Ibrahim said? Anybody remember the dua? He said, oh Allah, I left my family without food, without provision, in a valley where there is no water, there is no plants, nothing in it. It's basically empty. But that place right next to where is your house is, your sacred house is. So that means Ibrahim knows that this is the place of al kaaba and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, when we guided Ibrahim to this place where the bait is. Also, Al-Ulama rahimahullah said that the concept of salah and ibadah and hajj was exist before Ibrahim. There is some of the ahadith mentioned that Nuh did hajj. Sheath, the son of Adam, did hajj. And even some said Adam himself made hajj. And that means the Hajj was only performed on the face of this earth in Kaaba. And we have narration giving these suggestions. And that's what Allah said in the Quran. The first house of worship was built on earth was the one in Mecca. So that means that this is basically this place was the first place of worship. And definitely Nuh has a place of worship. Definitely the prophets before Adam had a place of worship. So these are some of the evidence that they used to say it is exist before Ibrahim a.s. But who built it before Ibrahim? They debated. Some said Adam, some said the angels. For me, what it seems to be that the foundation of al kaaba was exist. Maybe even cities were building exist at certain time. But for a very long time in history, this was destroyed and basically vanished. And Ibrahim السلام, came and rebuilt it in the way that basically is very close to what we see today. Some even said the one who built it, Sheath, the son of Adam, but there's no proof for that at all. We have no doubt, historically speaking, that Al Kaaba was built several times during the history. And what we know, Al Quran documented for us the building of Ibrahim to it. But also history reported to us that there is other people built al kaaba through time. And among them a very famous known tribes known as Al-Amaliqah. Their, their great-grandfather, Imliq, the son of Lawud, the son of Sam, the son of Noah. They used to live in Yemen. And Al-Tabari, the very famous Muslim historian, he said those nations were known of their big, their very big build, tall, with a great civilization. They left Yemen and they spread in Hejaz in the west side of Arabia and reached Egypt and Syria and some even reached Al-Iraq. But this whole entire tribe with time basically were destroyed through wars. Ali radiallahu anhu said, Ibrahim built al kaaba Then after a while, it basically broke apart or fall apart. So the Amaliqah rebuilt it. Then fall apart. Then the Jurhum rebuilt it. Then fall apart. Then Quraysh rebuilt it. And this narration from Ali ibn Abi Talib reported by Al-Hakim wal Bayhaqi fi al-Shu'ab. So let's look at the, the most important one, which is Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he built al kaaba Ibrahim السلام, came to his son Ismail and informed him that Allah has commanded him to build Al Kaaba. He pointed to a risen area of the valley where the foundation of the Kaaba was established and began, he began the work. The foundation of Al Kaaba, it's ironic, Ibn Abbas said that he saw it. He said it looks like the molars and it has green in it. 
and it goes deep into the ground. When the people of Mecca were trying to rebuild it, they were trying to shake these foundations, and the moment they hit it with the, with the axe, the whole entire Mecca had an, like an earthquake, was shaking. So the people of Mecca said, don't touch it. One of the people who were part of the recent rebuild of Al Kaaba in modern days, and I'll tell you, was telling me he was inside Al Kaaba. I don't know if you guys know that, but in 1996, the whole Kaaba was knocked down completely and rebuilt. Completely from the top to the bottom. Without people realizing. But one of the things that I was told by someone who was in that process, he told me that he saw, basically in the foundation of Al Kaaba, the same exact, he didn't even know about the narration. He, I told him, how did you, he said, I saw the foundation, Sheikh Khalid. I said, how would you describe it to me? He said, like the molar teeth. He used the same word that Ibn Abbas did. And he said it has a color in it, like turquoise, like kind of greenish color in it as well. Then I told him the narration of Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, and the narration that came to describe the foundation of the Kaaba in the same way. Ibrahim alayhi salam, or Ismail, start collecting stones for his father, who placed, placed them one above another. His style of building do not require cement to keep it basically solid. As the house grow higher, Ibrahim couldn't reach how he go higher and he put the stones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for him down a stone from heaven. And he sit in this, stand up on this stone and the stone will carry it up, carry him up high so he can build the Kaaba. And that what we call today Maqamu Ibrahim that still exists until today. And it's been said in the sound narration, but originally it was so big, when he stand in it, he will go all the way to his knees. Basically it has a, like a hole in it, and he put his feet inside it, all the way to his knees. And it will go up high, and he will put the stone. So Ismail will handle him, and he will take the stone, and he build the cab. This special stone of Jannah became soft, because of the amount of time that Ibrahim stood on it and basically made a deep print of the feet of Ibrahim السلام, which is known today as Maqam Ibrahim. If you go today to Mecca and you look at the stone, you see the print of Ibrahim's feet in that uh, uh, rock. Allah Azza wa commanded Ibrahim and Ismail to leave a vacant space in one of the corners of Al Kaaba. Then by the end of their construction, Jibreel, the angel Jibreel, came down with the stone from Jannah to be placed as the cornerstone of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that what was known as the black stone. It wasn't actually a black. And even if you read in the books of history and the books of ahadith, they will tell you that the black part of it was the top. But actually the rest of it was white. In Nabi Sallallahu mentioned that it was all white. And it turned black the top of it because of the sins of the people. Some ulama said the sins of the people was what? Because every time people wipe over it, it take away their sins. The point was, if the sins can turn a stone to, to be dark color, what do you think sins can do to your own heart? To your, to your soul? So that, that's something to reflect upon. So Ibrahim alayhi salam built the Kaaba in a, in a quite different look than what it is today. First of all, it only had two corners. Not four corners. The first one, the one where the black stone is here. And the second one, over there, that's where Ar-Rukn al-Yamani is. So he has only two corners, two 90 degree, basically, corners. And here, it was a curve. So it goes straight and a curve. Like a kind of rectangle look without the 50 degree. So it goes all the way in, then it's curved like a basically half a circle. 
And also, there were no roof for the Kaaba, completely open. And also, it has two doors, one from this side, where the black stone is, and another one in front of it, where is the, the Yemeni corner is. Called Yemeni corner because it's facing toward Yemen. This basically, there is two doors on the ground. People can come in the, from one and exit from the other one. And it was much shorter. Al Kaaba today is about 45 or 46 feet high. But Ibrahim only made it 14.8 feet high. And because of this style, that it doesn't, it has only two corners, uh, it's ironic to know that the Arabs did not build houses with corners. They were so scared. They said because they don't want their home to look like Kaaba. And one of them did it once, and they said, let's see how Allah will curse him and destroy his house. When there is nothing happened to him, they start building homes like him with corners. Otherwise, it took them years to have the guts to build a house with corners because they thought that's only something unique to al Kaaba. Let's move forward until the time of the Prophet ﷺ when he was 35 years old, where the people of Mecca rebuilt al Kaaba. Basically what happened, an accident happened. A woman came basically with the charcoals and they put on the top of this charcoals some nice uh, good smell uh, pieces of wood to burn it to give a good smell to the Kaaba. And the Kaaba's curtain caught fire and quickly the fire reached to the woods because Al Kaaba made of rocks and woods. In, in no time, most of Al Kaaba was uh, uh, destroyed. It. So the people of Mecca said, We can't leave it like this, the sacred place. Everybody respected it. Let's rebuild it. So they decided to knock it down and rebuild Al Kaaba. And it's interesting when you read in the history. When they were knocking it down, they said, Ya Rabbi, la tura. God, don't be scared. We're knocking it down so we can rebuild it. What an ignorant. But they said, let's make a rule. People will donate, basically they fundraise to build the Kaaba. But they made a condition. You cannot donate to this cause any money coming from prostitution or coming from usury. Because we want to build it with what? With pure money. They couldn't have enough money to extend the Kaaba all the way to where it originally is. So they said, you know what? We just close it here and we do that small arch wall, this one. They said, let's make a wall here to identify where it is originally supposed to be. And we just leave it there. So people will know that originally this was part of it. But we couldn't include it now in the new construction because they don't have money. Maybe later on we'll do. And what they did, they closed the door from the Yamani Rukun, from the other side. And this door, they raised it up high. Why they raise it up high? Because they hire some one of them, one of their people, to stand at the door. So when it is high, you need someone to pull you up to get in. And we'll only pull up to get in their own people or those who pay. So they want to make business out of it. So they have control over Al Kaaba. One of the reasons they've been said also, because they used to have a treasure inside Al Kaaba and they don't want it to be stolen, they raised Al Kaaba from 4.5 meters to 9 meters high. Added a roof that was previously not exist. Close the second doorway uh, to maintain no internal flooding. Also, the Kaaba will not be flooded with water. Raise the first doorway and added locked door, which has never exist before. Before, it was just opening. No doors, nothing. So they added the concept of door. And also, shorten the distance between the two corners and curved wall due to the lack of material by 3.26 meters uh, on one side and 
meters on the other side, converted the once curved wall into a flat wall with two corners, added stones to mark the original curve that built by Ibrahim alayhi salam. And that's basically the shape of Al-Kaaba during the time of Quraysh when the Prophet was 35 years old. What we have today. One more thing. The black stone, when it came to a black stone, they said, who will get the honor to put it? And they said, after a big dispute, the first one comes, we'll see what he says. It was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, I have a suggestion for you. He bring his clothes like this, and he put it in, the, in his basically clothes. And he said, every head of tribe carry the, the garment from one side. And all of us, we put it together. So they all carry it. And the Prophet ﷺ replaced it with his own hand in that spot, in the same spot. Also during that time, Maqam Ibrahim was touching Al-Kaaba. Basically almost attached to Al-Kaaba. But later on in history, it was pushed back. Al-Ka'bah remained this way for a quite long time until the Umayyad's time came. And the Umayyad comes, which is about 64 Hijri. During that time, after the death of Muawiyah, Yazid ibn Muawiyah, some people refused to show their loyalty to him, to consider him the Khalifa, they rebel against him. And among them, a man by the name of Abdullah ibn Az-Zubair radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Zubair basically stood against the Umayyads and he was surrounded in Mecca by the army of Yazid. While they surrounding Mecca, they hit Mecca with the catapult. They put rocks and oil and put lead it and they threw it into Mecca. So what happened? A big portion of Al Kaaba was destroyed and burned. But the siege was lifted because the Caliph died. And the new one order everybody to come back. So the siege was left and people left al Kaaba. Left al Kaaba half destroyed or a big portion of it destroyed and the masjid was completely messed. So Abdullah ibn Zubir now he want, he's the governor of this area and he want to rebuild it. So he said, I made istikhara for three days and I decide to rebuild al Kaaba the way Ibrahim built it. Not the way the people of Quraysh built it. The only difference he made than Ibrahim salam, he raised al Kaaba higher. Because the higher you go, the more honor the building is. And guess what? Ibn Abbas told him, don't. Leave the rocks the way it is. Leave the building the way it is. This is how the Prophet came and he died. And Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and the Caliphs and the Muslim scholars and most of the companions. Nobody. Just leave it. In Nabi Sallallahu was worried about people. Now there is political unrest. There is a lot of reason people will attack you for because of it. He was not very happy with the idea. Then he said, In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was worried about Quraysh reaction. And I'm not worried about anybody's reaction. And there is shortage of money and I have so much money. Because in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the people of Mecca were not just the new Muslims, I would have knocked down al Kaaba and rebuilt it the same way Ibrahim built it. Abdullah ibn Zubair, surrounded again by the Umayyads, he was killed. al Kaaba was regained by the Umayyads. So now the Khalifa Abdul Malik ibn Marwan got a letter and said, what should we do with the change that he made to al Kaaba?" He said, change it. He doesn't want the legacy of this man who rebelled against his dynasty to remain. He said, change it. Not only that, he was not aware that the sunnah is to do it according to Ibrahim. He was not aware. That's why later on, when he was told that Aisha said the hadith, he said, if I would have heard this hadith, I would have not changed what Ibn Zubair did. So what he did, he basically rebuilt the wall again and make it like cube kind of. He kept that curve outside. He closed the other door. Raising this one, the one that you see in front of you, and he returned it back the way it was in the Prophet ﷺ time. The only thing he kept is the height. He said, that's fine. Let's keep the height because it's more honoring for him. Days goes back, another dynasty comes. It's called 
Abbasi dynasty. Then Harun al-Rashid came to Imam Malik and he said, what do you think? Abbasis are not very good term with the Umayyads. So they said, what do you think of the Umayyads did? And this is what the Prophet ﷺ wish was. That Imam Malik rahimahullah said, I ask you by Allah, let it be as it is, so that it may not become the sport of kings. If the rulers continue to demolish and rebuild the Kaaba, losing its respect and honor from the minds and the hearts of people. And he said, please leave it it is, and it was, until the Ottoman's empire time comes. Sultan Murad Khan, in 1039 Hijri, a big flood came to Mecca and destroyed almost the Kaaba. And many fatals, many people died in this flood, it's in the history. And one of the sides of the Kaaba was completely knocked down. And during the reconstruction of that side, the other side fell apart. So the Khalifa said, you know what, just knock it down completely and rebuild it again. And they did, and they completed in 1040. It took them one year to rebuild it. And basically, this is the exact dimension that we have today of Al Kaaba. And it was there, it stayed like this until 1996. In 1996, about 400 years later, King Fahad, the king of Saudi Arabia, he ordered the reconstruction of the Kaaba in a way that he wishes that it would remain until the end of the days. Because the type of wood that he used bricks that he used is a lifetime warranty on it. He took it, I think, from Finland or something like that, the wood, that it is a lifetime warranty. It never goes bad. You see inside the Kaaba, that's basically constructed with wood here. Why did he do that, first of all? Because it was completely rotten. Yeah, teramite was completely destroying the Kaaba from inside. They added a new silver, basically, face to the black stone. They renewed the door, completely put a new door, a new lock for the door. And what is interesting, made of pure gold, by the way, 23 carats. Many times the black stone targeted specifically. And even the history speaks about in one of the Romans came and discards himself as a, as a hajj. And when he reached Al-Kaaba, he came and he took the axe and he hit the black stone and destroyed part of it. And the worst thing ever happened to the black stone when uh, a man by the name uh, uh, Abdullah al-Junabi is the Qaramita, it's a sect, it's a very extreme Shia uh, sect. He took uh, the black stone from Mecca and that was 317 Hijri. And they kept it in the East province of Saudi Arabia today for 21 years. And it took the Muslim 21 years to get it back. And knew how to get it back? They paid him. What I would like to say, out of that almost two feet long black stones, 60 years ago, only reported 15 small pieces like this. What we have today, only eight pieces. That's the only thing left from the black stone. And these pieces are held together in a black clay compressed of amber, wax, and musk. The only other part that is left from Al Kaaba, it's still the same, which is the Yamani corner. That's still from the time of the Prophet. ﷺ. But these two rocks, even though everybody knows they are from Jannah and very special, no one ever through history worshipped them. Allah kept them pure from any type of shirk. And also always found, no matter how they, what happened to them, taken away, getting lost, you always find them and you always bring them back to where it's placed. And the ulama said, until they find their way back to Jannah. Clear sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.